Let's begin with the call to worship. Almighty and gracious God, it is a privilege to worship you today in this one in Christ family. May our praise be joyful, may our hearts be turned towards you, and may our souls be quenched with the waters of your word. We give you all glory and praise and gratitude this day and forever. Amen. Of our Lord, our God, oh, praise His 
Let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi, it's good to see you this morning, this Father's Day, and I'd like to lead you in a prayer. But before I do that, I just want to encourage you. You may be sitting alone on your couch, you may be missing friends and family due to the coronavirus, but I want you to know that you are not alone. You have many Christian brothers and sisters in the Korean Church of Queens. You have many other Christian Korean brothers and sisters. You have many other Korea, uh, Christian African-American brothers and sisters. You have many Christian European brothers and sisters. You have brothers and sisters all over the world. So we are all connected and that's the universal church that we confess. In fact, you're not only connected to Christians today, but also to Christians of ages past. And we all belong together. We serve the God of peace who adopted us as his children. We serve one father. So you are not alone. And together we are the body of Christ. I'd like to pray a prayer that many people have prayed before. It's a prayer for peace. So I pray that God's peace will fill your heart uh, all the time as God is with you. And I pray that you'll be an instrument of peace in this world, in your family, uh, in your life. And because that's really necessary, especially at this time. So let's pray. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in forgiving that we are forgiven, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. This time, let us bring our offering to God. Please place your offering envelopes into your boxes and baskets. Now allow me to pray for this. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we want to thank you for this offering we can bring to you. All that we have, Lord, is coming from you. Means, Lord, we confess that everything we have, they belong to you. Allow us to be more generous like your Son, Christ Jesus. And we want to use all these resources for the purpose of kingdom, to save others and bring them over to you. Father, we love you. We love you for everything you have done for us. And we want to give you all the glory that you deserve to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's passage is coming from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 2 through 18. Please open up your Bible and we're going to read the passage all together. Now there is in Jerusalem near the ship gate a pool which is Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an, an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he 
he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Jesus, he healed a lot of people while he was doing his ministry on the earth. But today we're going to look at this particular man who had been paralyzed for over 30 years of his life. And he was coming to this place called the Bethesda. It's a water pool that was known to be having some sort of healing power. That's why a lot of people with disabilities, they're coming to this place, uh, hoping that they can actually be healed. And this man was one of them. But he was brought to near the water pole. But for some reason, there was nobody who could actually take him when the water would steer up. And it seems like his situation was pretty hopeless. And here comes Jesus asking this man a question. Do you want to be healed? He said, of course, and I want to get to this water, but there's no one who can actually take me to the spot. And Jesus tells him, get up, take your mat and walk. And you know what? The man was healed. 30 years, over 30 years, he had been paralyzed. I'm pretty sure his like, body was not ready to stand up immediately because he was told by someone to stand up, right? It would take some time for him to get healed and be able to walk again. Even if there was some sort of cure or treatment, and let's say this water, by touching it, he could be healed. But still, he wouldn't be able to walk immediately but Jesus actually healed this man by telling him, Get up, take your mat, and walk. And friends, that's what exactly happened to us before Christ. Yes, we heard about Christ. We know that Jesus Christ is a sinless Son of God uh, who came down to the earth in a human body, and all He wanted to do is saving us, saving whole humanity, securing hope and eternal life for us on the cross through death and resurrection. But then do we need His grace only at once? Like in a one single moment of our lives? No, that's not true. We need the grace of God, grace of Jesus in every single day. And let me tell you, there are three things why we need Jesus' grace in our lives. First, Jesus' grace brings our attention to His voice. Look, like this man, we may be stuck in a hopeless situation. Or in a situation where there is hopelessness. It means we can't really find any solutions. We are challenged. Uh, we are having a lot of issues. So we have only a bunch of reasons to be discouraged. Uh, and, and, and we can't really find anything good in certain moments. And you're like a stop. There's no way to go forward, backward, left, right. And all that you can do is just sigh all day long. I mean, I can guarantee as we live in this world, although we are following Christ Jesus, because they are full of sinfulness, because they're full of troubles. Hope is in Christ. Hope is not in the world. But we live in the world. 
We are the one to show the hope of Christ to others, but we are facing with a lot of situations with hopelessness, just like this man. And when that happens to us, yes, there is Christ, there is the Holy Spirit in us, but because of our weakness, friends, we may actually try to find some solutions or let's say draw our attention to worldly solutions. It's stupid and silly, but that's what commonly would happen to us, even as Christians. But Jesus, because He's so gracious towards us, what He can do is, or what He does, He always calls us so that we can draw our attention to Him. And that's what happened to this man. Before the grace of Jesus, like particularly the grace of healing, came to this man, he was actually called by Jesus. I mean, Jesus spoke to him so that he could actually put his eyes on Jesus rather than looking at the pool, our pool called Bethesda, which was reputed to have healing powers. Just like this man just was looking at this pool called Bethesda, which was reputed to have uh, some sort of healing powers, like I said, we are looking solutions in different places than in Jesus all the time. I mean, we should be looking for solutions. We should be looking for hope. And actually, we should be looking for Christ Himself in any kinds of situation we may face. I'm talking about hopeless situations. Look, when we are sick physically, when we are challenged emotionally, we also may get discouraged spiritually. Whole situation with challenges, calamities, and distresses, they may challenge us, just like this man was challenged. And unless we draw our attention to Jesus and His voice, we're always going to lose the hope. We may not find any hope. But once you draw your attention to Christ Jesus, because He's so gracious to us, friends, we can always find the solutions, always find the right way that God can provide us. It means Jesus also wakes us up spiritually so that we may not rely on the knowledge of this world, wisdom of this world. Instead, rely on Him only because He is our Savior. So Jesus' grace always brings our attention to His voice. Of course, first and foremost, we can hear Him through the word of the Lord. And the grace of Jesus not only draws our attention to His voice, not only it wakes us up spiritually, but it also heals us. So Jesus' grace leads us to healing, and that ultimately leads us to walk in holiness of God. I mean, without Christ, friends, we were sinners. Apart from Christ, we were all to be thrown to the hell. There was no grace. And of course, we were suffering already on the earth. There is a hopelessness. I mean, there's no guarantee that our life will get better. I mean, in Christ, yes, we may be experiencing some hunger. We may be are in still poverty. We are maybe challenged by any sort of or kinds of um, situations or its hardness or hardships. Still, we have a hope in Christ. That's why we can be rejoicing and stay uh, delighted, right? But Without Christ, that doesn't happen. But in Christ, because we are in His grace, doesn't matter what happens, friends, we always have, have, we always have hope. Have we ever seen rescued animals or dogs without masters on the street? I mean, they look horrible. They're hungry. They're exhausted. They're scared. When, when they are rescued, it's totally different. I mean, they look different before and after they are saved. When they are saved, they are medically treated well, they are fed, uh, they are embraced, they are warmed, they are taken care of. And that's what happens to us. Without Christ, we are like straying animals on the street. We have no masters. We just leave what we have. And there is no betterment of our life situations and our condition as well. But now that we are in Christ, we are living in 
the abandoned grace of Jesus. Not only we are healed, but we also stop obeying the world and its sinfulness. But now we obey God, and we live in obedience to God and in the holiness of God. And when I say the holiness of God, it means you are distinguished in Jesus and His freedom. I'm talking about the freedom that Jesus secured for each one of us on the cross. And because there is a freedom that came through Christ Jesus, you are free from hopelessness, anxiety, uncertainties. And of course, ultimately, you are free from sin, its result, which is penalty, the hell, presence, and power. So friends, Jesus' grace leads us to walk in holiness of God. And it heals us. Lastly, friend, Jesus' grace makes us focus on God's calling. Look, Jesus was so into his calling to save people. Like, not only he healed this man who was paralyzed for a long time. When Jesus faced this guy again, he reminded him that he should stop sinning so that worse thing would not come at him. And basically, he was telling him that you should now live with faith. But because this man who was healed by Jesus started walking around with a mat, which was against the Jewish tradition of Sabbath. I mean, religious leaders of the Jewish community they were curious. Who was it that told this guy that he's allowed to walk around with his mat? I mean, I'm surprised that these Jewish religious leaders were not even surprised by the fact that this paralyzed man got healed. I mean, at this moment, they probably would have started thinking, maybe Jesus is the Messiah, the, the one that we had been waiting for? I mean, instead of being humble and thoughtful more about God's working in their lives, they were actually becoming more mad at Jesus. As soon as they found out that Jesus was the man who actually told this paralyzed man to walk around, which was against their tradition. And they were so set for killing Jesus Christ. I mean, at this moment, I'm pretty sure Jesus could feel the tension, but he didn't really not care. And he says, as my father is working to these days, I too am working. He was so focused on his calling of saving the humanity, healing them providing them, feeding them, and telling them the truth and sharing the gospel, the true message of God's love and His intention to save the whole humanity. Guys, this is what we must be experiencing in every single day of our lives. I mean, there is a grace of Jesus in our lives. In fact, we all are saved because there is grace of God, grace of Jesus. And not only grace of Jesus would wake us up to draw our attention to His voice, to His will. Like heal us physically, emotionally, spiritually, right? And would encourage us to walk in holiness of God, in distinguishness, I mean, in distinguishment of living on this earth. You are here on the earth, but you are not following the world and its knowledge, but you are following God. And of course, you are so focused on the calling. Ultimately, God called all of us to make disciples, just like we could become disciple of God, I mean, disciple of Jesus, and children of God, by His grace. That's what we do. I mean, calling other people to God as well. And just like Jesus could be so bold and fearless, we should be like Jesus, be bold. It means no persecution, no barrier will stop us from accomplishing and fulfilling God's will that is set for our lives. Why is that? Because once you experience the supreme power and authority of God and the unfailing love, mercy, and grace of the Lord, 
if you want to give your life to God and dedicate yourself to Him and to His calling only rather than anything that you can see and find on this earth. So friends, how you can live with the grace of the Lord? You and I, we must seek it. I mean, God communicates His will first and foremost through His Word. Knowing that, friends, we must focus on His Word. I mean, just expose ourselves to reading and meditating it and seek the grace of God. And there's one thing we should remember. God does not reprimand us and scold us for asking Him to show His grace to us. James chapter 1, verse 5, If you think you lack of wisdom, you should always ask God and He will give you generously. And God is God who generously gives His grace towards us. And when there is a grace of the Lord, it wakes us up. It draws our attention to the Lord, not to the world. It heals us. And it allows us to walk in His holiness. And of course, it always gives us the ability to focus on His calling to our lives. Friends, I really hope that you will live with that grace. And because when we live with that grace, friends, you're never going to grow weary. Instead, you will always stay delighted, assured, and strong in faith. Let me pray. Dear Lord, we come before you and we want to thank you for this word that is spoken to us. Lord, with, without your grace, we can't live a single day. So, Father, we pray that you would allow us to experience your grace every single day of our lives abundantly, Lord, so that we may draw our attention to you, always fix our eyes on you, and try to live in your holiness. Live with the freedom that came to us or given to us as a free gift of salvation through your Son, Christ Jesus. Also, not only Lord, we pray that you would allow us to know the exact calling to each one of us, Lord, but you will also help us to live out your calling. And thank you for giving us your purpose to our lives. We love you, Lord, but we want to love you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, that was it for today. And this time, let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.